Oh, you guys gotta do this to me, man. Why you guys gonna make me make these shitty ass videos? Because you know you can tell the fucking truth about some shit. Give me a second. Alright. Mmm. Mmm. Alright, we good? Alright, alright. Man, whenever I'm making a video, I can generally tell when I'm going to take a heat for a certain video. And I, I can already tell I'm going to be taking heat for this one. But there are things that I need to touch on uh, when it comes to this new bill that Senator Josh Howley proposed. It's called the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Bill. Um, and basically what it's incentivized, what it's basically saying is that the government should be cracking down on games industry usage of loot boxes and pay-to-win practices as, as its exploitation of addiction in kids. Now, a ton of YouTubers have talked about this, and a ton of YouTubers are expressing excitement over this, and I want to state, state right out. I stand by them wholeheartedly in their, in their rally against these kind of exploitative practices, and I stand by them 100% when they go and call this stuff out. That be, being said, what I am against is any government intervention into the gaming industry. I see this bill as a complete government overreach and it ultimately leading to ramifications that will have long-lasting negative impacts on the industry and, more importantly, the consumer. Okay, Because ultimately, I see this kind of bill leading to the doors opening wide enough for the government to start incentivizing taxes on the gaming industry, which... At first, if you look at that, that sounds good because, you know, they make a lot of money as it is. But when you really start, when you get to the end point of that, ultimately, it's mostly harming the consumer. If the government starts cutting into a game's profit. That loss has to be made up somehow. And that means more emphasis on microtransactions, less innovation and growth, less development time in the gaming cycles, smaller companies folding in due to the inability to, inability to maintain income, job loss, and so on and so forth. It's it's not a good idea to limit these kinds of things because ultimately any smaller business, any restrictions that destroy smaller businesses' business practices means that the larger businesses have a, have a much easier time avoiding competition in a competitive market. That's why government regulations and restrictions are not a good idea. With all that being said, I want to be clear. I am going to be saying things that go against the norm of what all these other YouTubers are saying, simply because I feel like they are not being, uh, they're not painting out the entire picture. Uh, so when they're leaping for joy at the idea of the government sticking it to the companies like Activision and EA, I think they fail to realize that the removal of these loot boxes just means that other forms of microtransactions will inevitably come in to fill that empty void, that profit void. You guys remember that red dot ridicule or that $28 uh, melee bundle that Black Ops 4 had? Yeah, well, get ready for tons of that and get ready for all the items that are already inside those loot boxes to be sold individually as <clears throat> individual black market items. Because there's going to be a tons of that stuff if you guys, if this bill actually goes through. Now, as excited as many of these YouTubers are, are, and I definitely understand where their excitement is coming from, the idea of a gaming industry without loot boxes is like the utopia at this point. I don't think they fully understand just how uphill of a battle this bill ha actually has. For starters, this bill still has to go through the House and Senate, and then it has to be approved by the president, who is currently not a fan of big government regulations on businesses, Along the way, it still has to be set on the calendar to be debated and amended if needed, which it definitely does because it's pretty vague, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but it still has a very long way to go before before it could ever become a law, and there's still a good chance of it actually getting rejected. So why do I say that this bill is pretty vague in its claims? Well, it, it for starters, it claims that the government needs to step into the gaming industry and start cracking down on exploitative practices of pay-to-win and loot boxes. It claims that these practices are being used to monetize addiction to children and that game developers are knowingly putting them into their games and should face legal consequences for that. They claim they want to focus on games designed for kids. The problem is the vast majority of the gaming market is not focused on games designed for kids. They're focused on games designed for everyone, uh, uh, all audiences. 
but they try to cover for this by saying even even games that are designed for adults that it's the game developer's responsibility to know at all time who exactly is playing their game and to set up systems that will wall off children from monetization practices okay this is insane this is insane how is a developer supposed to program something to know who exactly is playing their game at any given time it is not the game developer's responsibility to know who is playing their game at any given time. That is the parent's job. It's not the developer's job to know when the ch child is playing and when an adult is playing. I'm absolutely not comfortable with any company, any company at all, being able to access that much information that lets them know who exactly is playing their game at any given time in order to claim to be uh, um, abiding by this bill. I mean, this right here... Is getting into Facebook levels of privacy invasion. That, that's scary. That is scary. That's but that's not my only issue with it. When it comes to pay to win, they claim. Give me one second. Okay. When it comes to pay to win, they claim that it its practices induce compulsive purchases like increased difficulty curves, are selling paid upgrades for competitive advantages. <laughs> right off the bat, I can tell you that this is way, way too broad of a, a claim in terms of legal terms, and it's completely government overreach. The government does not have the authority to tell businesses whether they can or cannot sell these kinds of items. These kinds of This kind of overreach completely cripples the free-to-play market, who largely revolves around these practices to not only sustain their game, but also their business. And that doesn't just apply for the free-to-play market either. I mean, we're talking about the entire gaming industry. This would send massive ripples throughout the entire industry. If your game even has anything considered to be a competitive, a paid competitive advantage, like an XP booster in it, you could be in theory prosecuted for violation of this bill. Bill. We could take this even a step further with games with like paid expansions or DLC packs that grant new weapons and stuff like that, especially when it relates to multiplayer, and say that that is a paid competitive advantage and therefore violates this bill. Now, I am generally against these practices for the most part, whether I like it or not, whether I stand by it or not, I still think that companies should be allowed to sell these kinds of things to their players, and I think that it's ultimately the player's decision to purchase these kinds of things, and I think it's also the player's responsibility to call it out if they see this kind of stuff. And there is absolutely no way in hell that I am even remotely comfortable with the government having that much control over the gaming industry. Like I said before, the, the responsibility should fall on the consumers or the players to understand what, what exactly is being purchased and determine whether they support these practices or not, and to call them out if they don't. Like I said before, there's, there, there's no way of knowing if a child is playing on Candy Crush on their parent's phone or if it's the parent playing it. How is a game supposed to know how to wall, when to wall off monetization practices in order to abide by this garbage bill? The answer is, it's not. So the only solution is other than giving the gaming industry the incentive to access this kind of information is to just get rid of all pay-to-win monetization practices for all players. And we're talking about destroying an entire infrastructure of the free-to-play market. How many jobs are lost because of this? How many businesses are destroyed because of this? How much innovation is stifled due to these restrictions? These are all questions that we have to ask ourselves before we just allow the, the government to run roughshod over uh, business industry. And also, the, the responsibility of allowing a child to access these monetization practices falls strictly on the parents, who should be aware of not only the games their kids are playing, but also the enforcement of punishment if a child is to overstep their boundaries, such in the case of using parents' money to engage in these practices. I don't know about you guys, but you can be damn sure if my kid does this kind of stuff, if he, if he purchases stuff under my account without my consent, he's going to be getting his ass whooped. You know, they'll be, they'll be damn sure they'll be thinking twice before ever doing something like that again. But I still think that it's ultimately the parent's responsibility to make sure that that stuff doesn't happen. Now let's get into the fun part about the loot boxes and what this bill claims about them. And much like pay to win, actually it says a lot more about pay to win than it does about loot boxes, but it's still incredibly vague compared. It's still incredibly vague. So it claims that loot boxes, quote, combine the addictive properties of pay to win with the compulsive behaviors inherent in other forms of gambling, end quote. Both parts of these statements are factually incorrect. The first, first part claims that all loot boxes contain pay to win material. This is false. Most loot boxes and paid games uh, do not contain pay to win advantages and contain strictly cosmetic items that have no uh, competitive advantage at all. 
The second part, and now, now I, I do want to back up for a second. There are games that do theoretically contain items that have competitive advantages. It, it ultimately depends on what the definition of competitive advantage is. If you consider a weapon inside of a crate as a competitive advantage, then yes, there are still games out there. You have like Black Ops 3, I know you have World War II, Call of Duty World War II that had them. I, and I'm sure there's plenty, of, there are other ones out there. Um, <clears throat> but for the most part, the vast majority of AAA games that have loot boxes in them, they're strictly cosmetic. And the second part of this claim is inaccurate because it implies that loot boxes are a legal form of gambling. They are not. This is something that a lot of YouTubers push, and I don't really understand why, particularly since it's not legally defined as gambling, but they still push it as if it is, and they still claim that it is gambling. No. Loot boxes are not a legal form of gambling. They might have the inherent behavior of it. They might have <clears throat> similarities to slot machines. That does not make them gambling. I'll get to that in a second as to why they're not, but for the most part, I feel like in order to rid this industry of these kind of exploitative practices, we need to be honest with not only our audience, but ourselves in this kind of stuff. And for them to say that loot boxes are gambling, this is merely a perspective and a factually incorrect statement in terms of legal definition. There's also this other weird thing that a ton of YouTubers have been saying where they're like, well, I guess that means games that have loot boxes will be forced to change their rating to an A rating and then stores won't sell them anymore. Okay. <laughs> Guys, if you think that GameStop or Target won't change their policy to be able to sell games like Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, or Overwatch, or any other major AAA title that has a huge market value to it, <laughs> you're, you're a little out of touch with reality. I'm sorry. What, no, what will happen is either one of two things. Either the A rating will become the new M rating, and the old M rating will just be rendered obsolete. What I mean by that is basically just getting rid of the M rating altogether and just making it the A rating. Or what might happen is, excuse me, the M rating will take on the merits of the A rating, and therefore it will no longer be 17, it will be 18, and the A rating will just cease to exist. The, that, that, is, that, is what it, that, will, that is what will happen. They're not going to take those games off their shelves. They will continue to sell them. They're too much of a profit there in order for them to not sell them. But let's get back on topic, though. So loot boxes are not a legal form, legal form of gambling by definition in the United States, in the UK, in Ireland... I don't really care about the last two, but I want to focus on the United States because ultimately when you're opening up a loot box, you are guaranteed an item or items that have an attached value to them through both the rarity of the item and the labor that actually went into developing that item. That all adds to the value of the item. They are actually more in line with like card booster packs than a slot machine. And I know a lot of YouTubers try to make the physical item argument that a booster pack actually gives you physical items that have a resale value to them while digital items do not in fact have a value to them, but this is simply not true. What they fail to realize or acknowledge is that there is in fact a value on digital goods. Case in point, Fortnite developed a bit of an underground market where players would create accounts, earn a bunch of these rare skins, and then proceed to sell off these accounts for profit. Those digital items didn't take away from the value of the account, no, they added directly to it. The same can be applied to like CSGO with the weapon skins or even Call of Duty. I'm pretty sure there's still a market out there selling max prestige accounts to those people who want it. And I think it's safe to assume that there's probably a market selling accounts with various digital goods found inside those loot boxes. You can't tell me that there isn't a market for Call of Duty Black Ops 3 that has all the, uh, the loot weapons that were in those crates. I'm sure it's out there. It, it, it almost always is. If it's not, there's definitely a marketplace for it. But to say that there isn't a value on those items, it's just inaccurate. So it, it's not legally gambling. I mean, I, technically, if you want to get to the gist of it, is it a gamble to put money into a loot box in hopes of getting an item that you want? Yeah, that, that's a gamble, but it's not a legal form of gambling. Um, because ultimately, with, when it comes to the legal definition of gambling, it involves you making a bet in hopes of winning, but also knowing that there is a chance of you just losing your entire bet and going away with nothing. There's also something else I wanted to mention about loot boxes that many of these YouTubers don't seem to want to acknowledge, and that is actually the steady decline of loot boxes in paid games. 
the simple fact is this the industry has been seems to be slowly moving away from these practices i mean the amount of backlash companies have been receiving for just having loot boxes even mentioning them has been massive and it's get, gotten to a point where companies have become hesitant and pretty uncomfortable with having them inside their game i mean just ask ea about star wars battlefront 2 and see how well that went for them dice came out and announced that they wouldn't have loot boxes in battlefield 5 respawn announced that they knew having loot boxes in apex legends would be a bad look so they wanted to get the game out as quickly as possible to show the players what it was about and then to give them the information on it epic changed the way that fortnite save the world loot boxes work so you can now see what items you're getting before you purchase it ea came out with their announcement that respawn star wars uh the new star wars game won't have microtransactions in it Rand and even randy pitchford and i know that dude's getting a lot of uh of crap thrown on him from the internet right now but he still came out and stated that borderlands 3 wasn't going to have any of those pathetic microtransactions like loot boxes Hell, and I know I'm gonna get I'm gonna get flacked on this one for this, but I, uh, it, it's a point I think needs to be made. Even the Call of Duty developers, the Call of Duty community is the one that seems to be boastful so loud about this government intervention shit. So, even the Call of Duty developers, one of if not the most egregious pushers of loot boxes, have been leaning more towards having loot boxes be something earned through more gameplay than purchasing. Now, it doesn't help their case when you have Treyarch doing some really stupid things with their system of loot boxes, like putting them in the game months after launch, and then just to avoid the uh, <clears throat> the reviews, and then showing off a bunch of new content and trailers coming to the game, only to reveal that most of that stuff was locked behind these crates, or in their most recent controversy, diluting the reward pool reward pool even further by making these new weapons charms animations and camos individually unlocks for each weapon I mean, all of these things have the call of duty community in an absolute uproar against treyarch and that's what i think a lot of people forget is the gaming industry knows just how ruthlessly shamed they're going to be for having these kind of practices inside their game i mean why do you think treyarch always puts this stuff in between some of their large content releases they know this stuff is going to get them a lot of criticism, and so they try to they try to mend that wound right off the bat by putting it in these large free content updates. So the free market is doing its job. What we're seeing is that more companies are moving more towards you know the style of live services that Fortnite popularized, as in the case of Apex Legends, Battlefield Five, Anthem. Yeah, I know that. Was, yeah, I know, guys. I know Anthem has its own set of problems right now. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and even Black Ops 4. Well, at least when it first came out. Well, not even that. It didn't even have microtransactions, did it? No, but Black Ops 4, during, I would say, maybe the... Black Ops 4, when it first started implementing microtransactions, had more of the style that Fortnite had. Well, no, they, they did. They had the, um, the whatchamacallit, the, the live, the contraband stream. Whatever. Black Ops 4 might be still implementing practices that are, are, are as old as Radio Shack at this point, or as becoming antique as Radio Shack. But we're starting; we're definitely seeing moves in company strategy when it comes to you know these kinds of microtransactions, and we're definitely seeing more companies move towards lot games as a service. And the reason being is not only because of the massive backlash that they face for having loot boxes or pay-to-win mechanics in their side inside of their game, but also the lucrative potential that games as a service present. Now, for a lot of people, this isn't fast enough, though. The results aren't what they expected. I think a lot of these YouTubers, they will never be happy until all microtransactions are completely removed altogether. And you know what? I'm not, I'm, I'm not blaming them for that. If that's what they want, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, let, let's be real with that. I mean, I think there might be an argument to be made that microtransactions do help fund future updates and stuff like that but I, I i would not shame them if they came out and said that they want the removal of all microtransactions and just want a solid game that's released it's the same at launch as it is at the end of its life cycle there's nothing wrong with that but they they call they grasp onto these things and start running with stuff that isn't technically true that being said <sighs> I, I, I just cannot support the idea of the government getting involved with you know restricting companies from doing this kind of stuff. I just can't do it. 
we we have to remember that it's our job as a consumer and as the people to make sure that we continue to speak out on these slimy business practices and to make sure that companies like EA and Va Activision are ruthlessly shamed for these for engaging in these kind of practices. In the same breath, we need to remember that the government is and always will be a gun used to protect and enforce the people, and we need to make sure that that weapon is always kept in check. It can only be given the most absolutely essential powers in order to do that job. If it's given too much, you will see abuse of it. We've seen this throughout history. I understand that gamers find this build to be inc incredibly refreshing, and uh, it's a beacon of hope to them. It's it's literally a beacon of hope to them. They think that oh yes, this this will finally stop these greedy ass large developers or these large publishers from doing these sh shitty microtransaction practices. I I'm I'm there with you guys. I understand where you're coming from with it. And I, I absolutely believe that Mr. Howley is proposing this bill 100% in order to try and protect children from these egregious practices. But with how vague this bill is, I think it opens the door way too much for government intervention. And I think it opens the door too easily for government abuse of power. Just a case in point, just a thought I had off the top of my head while I was you know, recording this. What if this bill goes through, it's passed, and loot boxes and you know pay to win mechanics all disappear from video games what if then the government decides that it wasn't actually loot boxes and you know pay to win mechanics or or they do they decide what if you know instead of just having pay to win and loot boxes be the only thing that exploits children Let's let's instead let's have a new law that says that sexually explicit imagery inside of a video game is exploitative to children and that it needs to be completely removed from video games. You see that that's where this leads and if you don't think that that's going to happen it absolutely will with the political landscape that we have right now that absolutely will happen. So like, I hate to be the person that breaks the hope here. I hate to be the person that breaks the beacon of hope. So I have the, the beacon of light, I should say. So I have another part that I want to talk to you guys. I want to bring a new ray of light to you guys. Right now, we are living in something incredibly beautiful. The gaming community is the biggest it's ever been. It is continually growing at massive amounts. Okay. Technology is pushing forward at incredible rates. We are getting the greatest video games with the top of the line technology at a relatively cheap price the same price has been for quite a long time we have access to so many amazing video games for cheap prices i just bought four video games uh, last week for a hundred dollars two of them were triple a and two of them actually no three of them were triple a and one of them was just a uh indie game but i was able to buy that for a hundred bucks and that's because of the market that we currently... That is entirely due to the free market that we live in. I'm sorry, but the government isn't going to bring back those old style of games that pack so much content in as possible before launching. And we're completely devoid of all microtransactions and DLCs. And I know there are YouTubers out there that won't admit it up front, but they absolutely believe that all microtransactions should be removed from video games. And I don't know why they're not just up front about that. I don't know why they should say, you know what, I don't like microtransactions at all. I think they should be completely removed. No cosmetic microtransactions, nothing. Everything should be unlocked in-game. And guess what? I don't think they're wrong. Like, I think there's an argument to be made about microtransactions, but I don't think they're wrong either. And I don't know why they're, they're not willing to come out and say that. Hey, that's okay. That's okay to have that stance. But, you know... This is the best analogy I can give you guys. If the government is the scissors, then the industry is the rock, right? The more restrictions you put on the industry, the stronger they get. You can ban pay to wins, you can ban loot boxes, you can ban boobs from video games, and guess what? The only person you're hurting when you do that is the consumers. Because you just took away the incentive for one company to sell their game with the promotion that this game won't have these kind of egregious practices and you just took away another company's means of funding the sustainability and growth of their game. 
Whenever you're removing companies from equation, whenever you're putting restrictions on the table, you are making it that much more difficult for smaller companies to come into the scene and set up shop. You're making it that much more difficult for companies to innovate their new product and push it into the market for people to decide whether it is better than this big, large company's product and whether they should just go with this new company's product. And with these smaller companies not able to sustain themselves and ultimately collapsing in, guess what? Guess who has to worry less about innovation and competition coming and knocking them off their pedestals in the free market? Yeah, the largest of the game publishers, the EAs, the Activisions, the Ubisofts. When more government restrictions start coming in, it opens the door for even more restrictions to start coming in. And that ultimately gives these larger companies more power over the smaller ones who simply can't afford it. When taxes start getting levied against the gaming industry, the the uh, the group that is going to be the most affected is not these large, massive game publishers. It's going to be the small ones, the indies, the um, just the small development teams, stuff like that, who can't afford to pay those kind of taxes while also living paycheck to paycheck to afford developing the game that they want to make so you guys know what the paper really is you want to know what the paper really is the paper that beats the rock it's the people it's the consumers it's the gamers but unfortunately the wallet doesn't move as fast as we'd like it to we want instant gratification we want instant results and so we often get frustrated and feel helpless even though we see youtube videos growing in views and subscribers with people who are agreeing with us and stand by our side in this fight we ignore the fact that we probably just gave somebody the insight into not buying into these practices and to stay away from them. We ignore the fact that loot boxes are becoming more and more obsolete in this modern market and instead moving into more uh, games as a service. I mean, if this video even changes one person's mind about not supporting companies that push this kind of these kind of practices, then all while me being honest, then I will have done my job. Not only with you know my fight against this, but also with trying to be as a apparent, uh, not apparent, um, transparent as I possibly can. You know, this video actually went on for quite a while. I didn't actually think it would be this long. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know that it's not it's not in the same category. It's not the norms of what all these other YouTubers are saying. But I really did want to push this because it's. Government intervention inside of the video game industry is something I have been adamantly, adamantly against. I truly do believe the consumer has is the powerhouse in the relationship when it comes to industry and consumers. It, consumers make all the decisions. Consumers are the ones who decide what is what is something they're willing to purchase and what is something they're not. And I don't think that government really truly needs to get involved with that kind of stuff. But... Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I will see you all in the next one. I know this one was a long one. Catch you all later. Mars out.